Not bad, is it, Gordon, for a Sunday? And uh, yeah, I'm fishing, I can't believe it. I've got that much work on. I've got that much work on. I'm feeling guilty being here. That's how it is. I've been on the phone twice to the wife because uh, um, just looking for my phone then, sorry. Uh, yeah, when I've got lots of work on, I've, I have so much guilt in coming fishing. And I've got to come fishing because videos are dwindling and if they get too low and I run out of videos and I've got a load of work on, I just won't come fishing and it'll just affect the channel. And I said, didn't I? I did say after the last one in, that I'm not gonna do that again. And there I am debating whether I should be here. As a matter of fact, I heard that there was going to be quite a few people there, but there's not. And uh, I think people have heard there's going to be a lot of people there and they ain't turned up. So they've gone elsewhere, which is good. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say is if I had turned up there and there was loads of people along here, I'd have just packed up, gone home, gone to work on the houses today into tonight. And then I'd have probably come fishing probably Wednesday because Wednesday Tuesday's the first day of spring um, 21st of March um, unless it's the 23rd but I will check it on Google but yeah first proper day of spring in old money uh, not what the BBC and the weather forecasters say when they say it's winter autumn it ain't you know if you've had an allotment yeah, first day of spring is March the 21st and you can risk putting your tatees out then. Um, don't cast don't, don't cast a clout until the May bud is out. And I've been driving along here and all the May bud is out. So shouldn't be any more frost now or if there is, it'll be mild. I suppose you can't guarantee yourself on old sounds like that. But yeah, 21st of March, as far as I'm aware, is first day of spring. So I've got to go fishing after that to um, get my cod in spring. And then if I catch any more cod after that, let's hope it's a big one. Um, I've got a no rig that I'm gonna tie and I shall be using that in spring as well as a flapper. So I'll have a flapper on one rod and the other rig on another. So yeah, yeah, I won't rarely talk enough to be honest, but it seems to be spilling out of my mouth quite easily, isn't it, at the minute. Uh, I've got my facelles yet again and I've got spin fisher reels. I've got new flappers. I've got small hooks, uh, tiny hooks up to big hooks because we just don't want a blank. So if we're not catching on a certain hook, we'll downsize. Wind's picked up a little bit now, but it's beautiful. Sun's out, look. I need suntan oil. I've just been to the van and because uh, being ginger, I'm getting burnt right now to a toast a cinder so yes tide's still out we've got a while before that comes in probably another hour i'm gonna get these rods baited up i've been and got my bait i forgot my box for my bait so i had to bring my kill box empty everything out of that and put the worms in there not good because i had to do two trips so i couldn't get it on my basket um these things happen don't they that'll be on my basket going back but hip Hip is better. Um, I'm putting the old jollop on and uh, I've been doing a lot of exercises and stretches and stuff and it seems to be helping a lot. I still limp. I think one leg's shorter than the other now, to be fair. But yeah, when I fall in a heap and I can't move because my hip joint has come out or whatever, what I'll do is I'll get took down to A&E and they'll just put it right there and then, won't they? I'll get admitted and they'll have to do it. And I think that's the quickest way of getting my hip done. Just put up with the pain, fall on the floor at some point, get took to A&E, and, &E, and yeah, get a new hip. So that's what I'm, fingers crossed, that's the way we're going. In the interim period, I might get a steroid injection when I can get an appointment at the doctor's. But there's many more people more deserving of appointment at the doctor's apparently than me. Anyhow, that's enough of that journey here well what was that like well i'll talk to you about that later because it's a bit too early to frighten off new subscribers with me ranting about the journey here it weren't too bad but you know what it was don't you you know what the problem was it was those sunday sunny sunday cyclists 
so yeah anyhow that'll be later in the video um if i don't talk about that you know what 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 the journey was like you can imagine what i was like and uh yeah if i chill out and calm down because i'm okay really just got a guilt complex of being here and not working but yeah i'll i'll message i'll i'll mention it but i've pretty much mentioned it already so don't they get in the way i'm watching these rods there's no reels on it so anyhow it's oh tom i didn't say cut for int reel mate you'll just have to snick it in in one of me pauses <laughs> sorry about that Say, hang on, I don't know if I'm in the uh, in boo. Have I got blue sky? If I've got blue sky, I'm all right in there. I'd just like to say, I got an email from uh, my mate Jimmy Rossbottom, and uh, he said, I've got a, a gift coming to you for reaching 4,000 subscribers and uh, it'll help you. So it certainly has helped. Um, I was considering buying this rod. I contacted Mike at Case to Tag. So uh, yeah, I ain't gonna go ahead with that, Mike. I'm ever so sorry about that, but these things happen. But yeah, Jimmy's bought me a Kenzaki, and this is a boat rod, but it's an uptide rod, so I can use it from the shore close in. Um, in my videos last summer, I used to use a bass rod, which is very flimsy. It only chuck about three ounces of weight four ounce at a push so if the tides got bigger I couldn't use it but with this rod I can cast up to 10 ounce and it's got a really flexible tip because it is an uptide rod so let's get it out And there we have it with the stickers on it so we have foam grip uh fuji reel seat uh fits fits a big beach casting reel on there to be fair um it's got the kenzaki same black and silver design same blue on it it's a daiwa um and it's fantastic it's uh got a very good tip the tip is designed on an uptide rod to, so it is bouncing up and down it doesn't pull the weight out so yeah it's got fantastic bite detection um, I'm only using it for chucking it out 20 30 yards at most might even be shorter it's not a beach caster for sh throwing it out it's for close in and uh, absolutely fantastic I was looking at buying one of these and then Jimmy come up trumps and what a fantastic gift. Um, thank you, Jimmy, for uh, giving me this for reaching 4,000 subscribers. I much appreciate it. It's uh, unbelievable. Jimmy also sent me two tip lights. Now, I don't know whether the, I don't know whether I'm going to use the tip lights. I've got to see what they're like on my rods. But I, in the past, have had line catch all round the tip here on a cast if you get it slightly wrong and it damaged all the tips on my Daiwa Supercast back in the day. So I don't want to um, damage the rods at all. I will look at using it. If I don't use it, um, I'll uh, contact Jimmy and ask what, what I can do and whatever, but I haven't checked them out yet. I haven't put them on the rods because I'm very busy doing two houses. But what a gift. Thank you very much, Jimmy. This is much appreciated. And I've thanked you on um, uh, by email. But yeah, it's fantastic. Hopefully I'll use this today. I haven't got a reel set up properly. I've only got a £20 braid on it. So I might just chuck out a, a little lead out there um, just to give it a go. But then I've also forgotten the rod rest attachment on my rod that Danny gave me. It was on the bench. I meant to chuck it in my bag, but come home last night from the house busy 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 had tea late we had cheese on toast with spaghetti on top which was rather pleasant and uh yeah shower and bed it was 
and obviously you forget things don't you but what a gift thank you very much Jimmy this is much appreciated um, as you know as I've already thanked you um, probably about three months ago I started thinking wouldn't it be nice having my two Kenzakis on the rod rest and this beside it an uptied Kenzaki because all the rods look the same now I know that's a bit anal and uh, not that I'm into that I'll tell you that now and uh, but it is a bit tackle tart ish but if that's what I am that's not a bad thing is it better being a tackle tart than some low life that lies to his subscribers that's what I'd say absolutely brilliant Jimmy thank you very much and uh, we'll see it in use hopefully today if not today you will see me with this being used with this ultra sensitive tip look at that in a video on the coast but I think I'm gonna get it and I'll put a cloth on the rod rest I reckon move the rod across and then stick this in it that's what I'm gonna do I think I think that's right matter of fact I might put this up in the middle anyhow that's immaterial thanks a lot Jimmy it's much appreciated um, I don't know if I've mentioned that but it's much appreciated uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll see you in a bit when that tide comes in I've had a sandwich I've had a cup of coffee I've still got a bit of coffee left I'm gonna go drink that get a rig reel on this get them all rigged up and you'll see me cast now when that water hits them rocks see you in a bit Ooh. Ah. Ooh. bit of line down there I'll click that Absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And look at that blue. It just looks like the blue on my Kanzaki. So this is it. Close up view of it. Teamed up with this. I shall be ripping this braid off because I don't like braid. I shall put some mono on it. But yeah, it's fantastic. Still got the wrapper on it. I've took the tags off. Fuji eyes, Fuji eyes, and yeah, look. So yeah, absolutely cracking. I'll need to paint this, paint this white though. All my rods are white. So yeah, so I've got it baited up. I've got all the rigs on. Got some squid defrosting. Tide is meter and a half away. Look, meter and a half. That's all. So we shall. Uh, be chucking out shortly I shall get worms on the flappers and on that flapper rig which has got size 2 hooks on the Kenzaki um, I'm just going to put some squid on I'd like to catch a flounder to be fair um, but yeah we want another cod don't we let's keep that running but yeah it's the next trip is going to be at this river again and I shall tell you for why there's nothing getting caught much on the beaches it's hit and miss <clears throat> so uh, I need to come here to get that codlin for spring the houses should then be getting done. Um, I can relax a little bit because I'm still a bit edgy at the minute thinking I should be working. And what I'll do is I shall uh, go to the beaches and come here. But we've got to keep coming here to catch me a cod for spring because then I've caught it summer, autumn, winter and spring. Um, that was my main achievement. I, I didn't realize I'd catch for 12 sessions on the trot and I've now missed a session caught a flounder and then I've caught cod 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 and cod and this one hopefully will catch another cod so this is the fifth one so this will be back to the fifth session on the trot again won't it yeah the next session the next video that goes up this Wednesday I caught the little tiny fish finger coddling and by god was I chuffed to get that just because it looked it was looking like a blank it was looking like the blank run was gonna finish it was gonna start and but it didn't I managed to pull it out of the bag you've seen that video already that's uh, two three videos back I think it's hard work trying to think where what and how and when but yeah so I'm gonna put you away in a minute I'm gonna squid this little um, Kenzaki up and then get these one of these up bait that up with some yellow tails and we'll start fishing and uh, I'll bring you back for the cast so yeah the wife the wife messaged me 
happy anniversary at something like well, I don't know let's say one o'clock I thought why didn't she say happy anniversary in the morning when I woke up and she got up because I was already up because I was coming fishing I thought why leave it so late I mean she'd forgotten our anniversary that's the problem she'd forgotten our anniversary she said happy anniversary to me at about one o'clock today so yeah so it's mother's day today isn't it and it's uh, my anniversary and I'm here on the bank fishing for you lot. Yeah, for my lovely subscribers. Thank you to all of you. Don't forget to click subscribe and ring that bell and leave a comment. And if you don't like to, thank you for the view. It's much appreciated. So yeah, here I am on our, my anniversary. Um, doing what all men should do. Real men. Get out there and do some fishing on your anniversary. You, you know, my wife knows I love her. As long as she keeps putting that food on the table. Well, you could call it food. It's a bit of scran sometimes, you know. Can't beat a bit of scran. Sandwiches aren't good though when she don't put sauce in them. They aren't good. They're like not lovingly put together. Anyhow, I'm gonna bait up. I'll bring you back, cast out, and uh, yeah. Wish me and the wife happy anniversary. Yeah, I forgot as well. <laughs> Mind you, I forgot the first one. We were around at my uh, best man's. We were stopping at his house and they brought the cards out and it was our anniversary. It was my first anniversary and the wife was there shaking her head. <laughs> I'd forgot that one as well. Yeah, see you in a bit. First time casting with braid. First time casting with this rod. I've got 20 pound braid on, five ounce weight, but it ain't going out far, I'll tell you. It's just gonna be a short little cast out to the left, and hopefully it'll just sit there. It's tipped with squid, size two hooks, and uh, yeah, I don't like braid. I think it's pants. That went out all right, no problems. Quite good for me. Let's get the next one cast out. It's hard work fishing uh, free rods because the lines all get in the bloody way. But yeah, uh, we'll give it a go. Let's get this out. Come round there. gonna get this with me. I need the little one. Let's put the bait that's been that on. That's better. Need to need to well, I need to go underneath this rod don't I? Put you where
Yeah. I normally have a clip on this leg so I can have that rod really low and then the line's low. Um, yeah, I'm using the Kenzaki rod, that's the main thing, I wanted to use it. Thank you very much Jimmy for that, it's, uh, you're a top, top, top guy, thank you very much. Um, yeah, what can I say, you know, you just do stuff that you think is right Jimmy, don't you? So, um, and. Uh, don't ask anything in in return to be fair apart from just me and you having a chat and friendship and you enjoy my videos that's all i can say thank you very much jimmy uh unbelievable unbelievable i can't wait to use it alongside my kenzakis right i've got a third rod to get baited up i'm gonna put some uh live black or yellows they are I shall put them on, but they're in a wrap. They aren't doing so well. But they're okay. They still tense up when you slap them down. So I'm going to do that. Get that other third rod out. I need to think where I'm going to cast and which, where I'm going to put these rods. I might have to put the uptied rod in the middle. Because then that way I can lift it through on the tripod easier. So I'll get this baited up and I'll bring you back and get that third rod casted out. See you in a bit. Well, I'm still limping, but I ain't in so much pain as what I was in the last video. The last video, I thought, I don't know how much longer I can cope. But with these exercises, with these exercises and uh, my uh, goo that I put on. Right, so it's normally easier if I have that fishing rod on the leg. I... Uh, Danny gave me a rod rest that he put on this leg here, left it at um, so I'll uh, use these rods for as long as I can, um, and see, as a matter of fact, I've got a spongy thing, I can use that, I might try that, and then it's down low out of the road, and I can just take it. Because I'm only literally casting literally just down in front of me. So I'm literally casting just down here. So if it's down out of the way, my rods can go either way and I shan't get tangled up. So I'll cast that out short straight in front of me. Because I've just cast it a long way. And uh, it'll all be alright. But that, I might try that. Might just make it easier rather than keep pulling rods out. Because you know what it's like with three rods? Is the uh, pearl one, knit one. Anyhow, we're out fishing. Time is 19th of March, and it is 13.51. So, probably spoke to the missus about the uh, anniversary, about 12 o'clock then. Couldn't have been uh, one, one o'clock. Must have been about then, but. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit hungry now, so I might have a sandwich again. They aren't, they're, they're really nice as well. Really nice sandwiches. So yeah, I shall have them. Um, yeah, wish I had some sandwich spread in them though. But they're really nice how they are, just mustard on their own, yeah. They're really palatable. But a bit of sandwich spread wouldn't have gone amiss, but then we haven't been to the shops because we've been busy. Oh, I'm looking forward to this now. Three rods out, a few hours on the bank, because it is a bank. Bit of sea fishing. Um, see what we catch, hopefully. I'm. Mind you, I caught in daylight before, because I was going to say I don't know if I'm going to catch because it's sunny and it's daylight. And I'm normally at night time, aren't I, in the dark. But the other day with John, in the last video, it was daytime, weren't it? But what a glorious day. I'm getting sunburnt. Should have brought some suntan oil on my hat. Going to have to put my, uh, my green hat in the bag, aren't I, for another summer, spring and summer. Look forward to that. Be able to empty some stuff out. And that reel's perfect. I'm just going to take that braid off probably. 
Um, I don't know anything about tying knot. Well, I tied knot in that one. I looked on YouTube and found a knot. I think it's a uni knot. Um, I forgot how to tie that now because I always tie blood knots. So I shall uh, see what I've got to do, whether I can. I think I'll just get some mono. Right, let's hope for a fish. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to pour a coffee, take some painkillers. So we catch a fish, eh? Um, journey air, what was that like? There was a few bikes. There was more bikes going the opposite way, which was a good thing, but they're all in their Lycra. You know, 50 year old men in Lycra. Yeah. Well, I suppose there must be a lot of women in the world driving around with the sat beside their husbands in the car, getting right excited when they see these 50 year old men with beds riding their push bikes in Lycra. So, yeah, I suppose they serve a purpose, don't they? But yeah, now you, I just slow down and I get, I give them as much room as uh, as you can, and uh, got to be safe, aren't you? But um, you, the problem is, it's not necessarily sightless because I just go past them. Um, it's other drivers. They'll see a car coming half a mile in front, sightless, and they'll slow right down, poodle on you. Think, what are you doing? So you just have to overtake all of them, don't you? Because there's so many fannies about, isn't there? Well, there's nothing wrong with sightless. They're out enjoying their Sunday, aren't they? Cycling around in the Lycra. And uh, all's good in the world, isn't it? Um, they don't ever bother me, apart from when you get a prat that jumps off his bike and shouts stop at you. Then you tend to reverse up, undo your window and give them what for. But apart from knobs like that, because that bloke in the Lake District was a knob, um, yeah, they're just out riding, aren't they? And I just drive, ride past, you know, give them four foot, five foot, whatever you do, don't you? I think I've got a bite. We're all here to enjoy ourselves on a Sunday, aren't they? Sun's out, everyone's enjoying themselves. It's the, the problem is, not necessarily the cyclists, unless you get a group of cyclists that are taking the whole road up, that's a pain. Um, there's no etiquette, is there? Because they own everything, don't they? same as uh, other things but I'm not going into that it's the it's the drivers that slow down to 30 mile an hour 20 mile an hour and they're poodling behind and then all the traffic come you think what are you doing we could have gone but anyhow it's a sunny day I'm air fishing we'll forget about that I said you I'd mention it and what we'll do is watch these rods I think I've got a tap on this left hand Vaselli so let's hope that develops see you in a bit Right, I'm going to reel this in because I've just had two taps on it. I had a tap when I first chucked it out and I had a big tap now and that could just been something robbing my bait. So we'll have a look and see what happens, see how much weed's out there. I wouldn't normally reel in as soon as this, it ain't been out long, but uh, let's get it in, check what we've got, hopefully there'll be something on it. I don't believe that. There was a fish on it. The weight got hooked on a rock at the front and I just let some slack on it to walk down there to pick it up so I didn't flick it up because there was a fish on it, a round fish. It was a little codlin and probably about 25 
centimeters 29 centimeters and then when the wake lifted up off no fish on it so it had obviously just mouthed on the bait I can't believe it that would have been my first fish <laughs> that would have kept the cod run going on the up front I found the glove that I lost it was laying down there so that ain't good is it so <sighs> bollocks I'll get this baited up and uh, we'll go again. I can't believe that. It was there. I thought, I've got a fish on it. Because it was really heavy and it went light, and but there was still a bend in the top of the rod. And then as soon as it come in shallow, I could see the fish there. About 25 centimetres, something like that. It was a cod. It was all mottled on its side. Bollocks. <laughs> see you in a minute. annoying really I can't believe it because um, uh, we're not catching other fish <laughs> that might have been it and uh, I've sharpened the hook points the hook points were sharp they dug in the nail anyhow but I've sharpened them even more now perhaps the lug it was uh, <clears throat> fresh slaps if you want to call it, it wrapped up so they were a bit bulky on one of the hooks so I don't know which one it was on so it's, it's your own mistake, isn't it? If your hook points aren't clear, you ain't gonna get the fish. And it was obviously hooked on on its teeth. So, balls, absolute balls. Let's keep the fingers crossed for another and uh, let's not let it ruin it. We're, but we've got a catch, but that might be the death, death of it, mightn't it? That might have been the one and only fish that would shoe up, but we'll see, we'll see. I ain't gonna mention that again, anyhow. Bloody hell. <laughs> right. I don't think I'm gonna get any other rigs ready today and have baited up. I think I'm just gonna use these rods. Um, I've got 16 fresh worms, that's all, all Scott had left. And he gave me a wrap, wrap as well to make up for it, so. We'll have to see what happened, won't we? I did have a tap on both rods, but the other rod hasn't gone again, so there might be a flatty on it for all I know, sat on it, but let's tighten it up. I've tightened it up. We'll keep an eye on that one, see what happened, and uh, pray to God another fish comes along. That's all I'm saying. We want a... Uh... Oh dear, bloody hell. I've got another bite on that one. I have, I've got a bite on that rod. I've just chucked it out and I've got a bite on it already. What's all that about? Oh, let's hope it's gonna be one of them hectic sessions. Wonder if it's, I have, I've got a bite on it. Look, watch this. Yeah, stop now, look. I just sharpened them hooks. Pray to God it's on it. Right, I'm gonna sit down and watch this. I'll tighten up on it, that's what I'll do. Let's see if you're in frame. Yep. Yeah, I can't see anything moving on it now. I've just had two or three knocks on that rod. The one closest to you, the Vaselli. I 
I've tightened up on it. It was slack, but there's nothing else happened. I had a session there where you kept getting knocks after knocks after knocks, you kept getting loads of bites and I never hooked anything. A silver bit ain't like that all the time. Right, I'll bring it back in a minute. I'll keep an eye on these rods and uh, hopefully, hopefully, it'll start tapping again. There'll be something on there. Right, we'll reel this, we'll reel this end rod in because um, it did knock earlier, but it ain't done nothing since. But there could be a fish sat on it, couldn't there? nothing on that nothing on that but the bait's gone off the first the bait has gone off the first hook so uh, the knock was a knock so let's get this baited up with another worm It was still fishing. Don't think that's got me there. It might have me. It was still fishing. Right, let's get a bit of squid on it. Tip it off with squid. That'll freshen that top bait up as well. Got squid on there. there. Wash these fingers. Rods everywhere. Right, let's get this cast about. Well, I don't know how well that went. That's gone a bit to the right. Wanted it to go straighter than that, but it's out there. Uh, yellow tails on there, tip of squid. Um, 
this rod ain't moved. It's a bit hectic fishing three rods, you know. I want to try and V the big rods out so I can cast the uptide rod. The uh, Jimmy uptide rod, Ken Zaki. Thank you very much. Um, up the middle. What's some battery light on this? Bought two new batteries for the GoPro and I've got one of them in. I'm at 26% at the minute and it's still holding fast, so that's good. I might reel this little one in. still fishing still got the squid on the hooks so it's still fishing there's obviously nothing there yet we'll get this baited up and chuck it out again jury's out on the fishing reel i bought the fishing reel might be a little bit too heavy for dragging a five ounce weight we'll see Put a worm on, I think. At least the bait was still on, it was still fishing. But um, we'll put some worms on. Hopefully, just get half a worm on this hook. Right. right. I need to cast it over. Am I in shot there? Yeah, I guess so. Nice rod, cast really nice. Oh, that's gone well. See, it's a lot easier when you've got the third rod down there because that's going through the middle and both lines are to the left and right. Well, it's hectic. I ain't stopped. I ain't stopped. So the next one is going to be the left hand rod, the Vaselli, which is the one I lost the fish on. I can't believe that. I just put to the Y and said first cast, and it's. Uh, gone like that first cast reeling and you see the fish it's literally six inch from the shore and get hooked up on a stone and because it got hooked up the snood went loose and obviously the fish then spat the hook it must have just had it in its mouth like that and its mouth was open just come off and off it went I mean it's returned but you can't claim it can you and first cast that just it's just as though it's a jinx I don't keep mentioning it don't want to keep mentioning it, but yeah. Let's hope it's not, um, what's the word? Well, let's hope it's not of things to come. Do you know what I mean? 
I've had two more bites and nothing. Now I've been down there before at loads of bites, but I've got a two wheel up there. I've got black lug on that now, fresh slaps and squid. It's moving now, it's going up and down touch. You know, I could catch on that, couldn't I? That's gone out a bit further because um, I feel more confident with the cast, with the braid. Um, that's gone out a lot further. I've only got 20 pound braid on there, five ounce weight. It's not the done thing to do. You're meant to have a leader on. But there's no one around me. So the only thing it's gonna do is it's gonna snap off and I'll lose the, the rig, which I don't wanna do that either because that's littering, isn't it? These things happen. I was going to go back out to the garage and stick one of my Airlex, Shimano Airlex rod reels in and bring that. But as I was driving along, I thought I forgot that reel. And then I thought I forgot my bait tub for my worms. And then I thought I forgot my rod rest for the hook thing that got the, onto my tripod. So it's one of them days. Don't think I've been fishing since the 2nd of March and it's now the 19th. We had such rubbish weather. I didn't want to travel. I uh, got the houses to do. Things haven't really gone in the uh, stars haven't aligned. Let's just put it that way. So it's nice to be out today. I've now got over the guilt factor of not being at the house working. So that's only took three hours, if not a bit longer. So yeah, I'm enjoying it now. It's quite nice. Well, it's very nice. I mean, Christ Almighty, here I am at the sun. And we all have a moan and a rant and a groan, don't we? And we're in a lovely place fishing or doing something else. Or we a lovely wife, aren't you? You know, doing what you do. And uh, you all moan still, or people moan, I moan. Sometimes you can't help it, can you? Your mind flips, doesn't it? And you get ranty about something. But there's people out there, isn't there, that can't get here, can't watch this. I have so many people comment to me on my videos. Because sometimes you think, ah, oh, I've had enough of this rubbish. Especially when a load of crap's going on and uh, stuff. And then you got your daughter upset. It's, um, yeah, things all go up and you think, ah, oh, I can't be arsed with all this crap. And then, and then you get some lovely comments from people that have got back injuries, they've lost limbs, they're, uh, waiting for operations on their rips and their knees and stuff and uh as soon as they get better they're going fishing well you know it's fantastic um if you watch these videos and you're stuck at home but you're going to be able to get out and you think to yourself i'm going fishing well get yourself off fishing because on a day like this today where it's sunny it's absolutely fantastic you can just forget all your woes all your troubles all the dickheads in the world, you can forget all of them. And just come here, soak up some of the sun. I mean, Christ almighty, sun. It's still here, still up in the sky, no clouds. So it's going to be absolutely glorious. It's warm as well. I can feel the warmth. It's uh, not really something I'm used to. This is the first time this year that it's been sunny like this. It was sunny in the last one, I think, or it was a bright day. But it's not sun glaring down on you, like today. Oh, I hope that fish, that first cast reeling, I hope that isn't a bloody death. I have to wait and see, that was a long pause, wasn't it? Put the intro in, put the intro in. <laughs> but I'll try and remember to put the intro in, ain't I? I just think it's good if I say that and Tom then slips it in, I, it makes me chuckle, you know. Right, well, I'm going to watch these. Change this battery, it must be nearly down now. But it is a lot better having two new batteries. So, uh... The reel. That little tiny icon, look. Didn't feel so as uh, substantial as my pen spin fishers. Um, I was going to buy a 3,500 or 4,500 uh, spin fisher, but funds, that was cheaper and it, it looked okay. But when I was reeling it in, it was like it was all over the place. Um, but then it is reeling in a five ounce weight, but rod, rod's brilliant. Um, the tip is tippy. Just need a fish on it, don't we? Let's break its back. And we're into 18 minutes, 20 seconds. So Tom's going to have to look for the second part of this because it stops at 11 minutes. 
and then stores it and then carries on filming. Anyway, see you in a bit when I reel in. I'll change this battery. I'm not having any more coffee because I'm a bit bloated on it. Pray for a fish. See you in a bit. I had some knocks on this rod earlier and uh, the bait is still on and uh, no fish on so it's not looking good. I'm not going to keep going on about that fish that come off because I got excited. It was really heavy and then it went light but I still knew I had some on because the tip was bent over. And then to see it come off when uh, it all went slack because the weight dug into this stone so the snoods just slopped around but Keep fingers crossed, time is 15.26. So we've got another hour before high water. So I've got an hour and as I know, this fish is well on the ebb. So I've just got a hope of all hopes that that's when the fish turn up, so. They're obviously washed out, but they're exactly the same. It's tipped with squid, both, both baits, but we'll, uh, I'll get these changed and uh, cast out again and uh, yeah, I'll bring you along for the uh, chuck out but yeah, both other two rods are stationary, nothing's happened there. Be nice to catch one on the old Kenzaki, well old, on the new Kenzaki. Uh, it chuffed a bit, can't believe it. You're an absolute diamond, Jimmy. I can't believe it, mate. It's, uh, I was going to do a live in the uh, garage thanking you, but I've thanked you in this video now. Uh, I thanked you any on email, but yeah, absolutely brilliant. And I'll check the tip light lights out as well. Um, I could use the tip lights actually on these rods, but I won't use the tip lights on my Kenzakis because uh, I don't want anything going wrong. Rods are too valuable. They certainly are. Right, where's that going? Don't I hit my new rod, do I? Thanks a lot. 
Someone fishing there, he's gone as well. Ah, uh, well, got it today. Only one. I've just had one just pulled it in and the hook got caught, the weight got caught up. And as I walked down to pull it up, because I didn't want to flick it, the bloody fish swam off. Uh, it must have just noticed it. Yeah, physical, isn't it? Yeah, see you later, mate. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> do you know someone just walked past and it's called Mike Fox? Um, he's the one that caught them 11 cod that day and he's just he's just been fishing another match he's now gone to measure and he stops he says hey i got something for you and he gives me a king rag which i, I mean i've uh, got to try and put that on the hook and uh, he's given me some white rag as well that are quite big he said just tip just tip them off with an inch or so no more and uh he's given me some yellow tails that he's popped so he said i ain't gonna get out the rest this week and he said, there, yeah, I've got some air for you as well. And I'm like, bloody hell, it's like Christmas. And he pulls out a metre long official measure stick, like what you've got. He said, you do my head in. He said, I, I, I watch you and you're there stabbing shit in the ground. He says, air, that's yours. <laughs> I says, I've got a mate that that winds him up as well. <laughs> so I've now got a man's rule. Yeah. But he's, yeah, he's just turned up, he says, if you do me head in here, have that, and then that'll be better for when I watch it. So now I don't know what to do with my little one. I feel like I can use the little one just for the little fish, can I? No, well, mate, I just reeled in the first car, so I had a bite on it, and I reeled it in, and it was heavy, and then it got light, but it was on there, and the weight got hooked up on the stone at the shoreline, and I went down to lift it up so I didn't ping the fish up, and I should have pinged the fish up, because the fish hadn't hooked, it would swallow, it had got hold of the bait. And it hadn't, it hadn't hooked it, and it just swam off, and I was like, fuck me, it was a little cod. Only three, he said, just tip them off with an inch. So he said, put a lug on, and then tip that off with it. Right. What I'm going to do is reel this uh, Kenzaki rod in and bait it up again with some bait. Um, Mike has just come past. You might have heard in the last clip because I left the camera run, but Mike's come past. He, he gets fed up with watching me measure my fish with a short reel and stabbing something in the ground. So he's, he's giving me a metre long measure. Fa thanks a lot, Mike. And uh, he's giving me some white rag, so I'm getting this in now, tipping it, getting it baited up with some white rag. That weren't fishing, was it? Look, both hooks are hooked up together, so it's a good job I rung that in, in it. Matter of fact, that's not good, is it? Right, let's get some worm on this super bait. Bring about in a minute. Sun's out again. It's absolutely fantastic today. Well, I'm going to cast this one out. I'm putting you air, set that up, and then we'll get this casted out over that way. So we've got white rag on there. We'll cast over this way. Brilliant. That's in short, so I dare this rod rarely. Um, it's 
reeling too bad. I Now I can reel this rod in, here. I can reel this in. I tapped that, that was me. I can reel that in and the braid's over there. The braid was down here and they might have got tangled. So that's why I've just done that. But yeah, I've got white rag on that. I was told just to cut it up, put it on with a bit of worm as well, but they're only small hooks. I've got size two Aberdeen hooks, match hooks. Um, <clears throat> literally just to catch something small. Just want to catch a fish, let's be fair. Be nice to pull in another codlin and try and get it on the shoreline so I could pick it up. But it weren't meant to be, was it? I remember once fishing down in Bay 19 and uh, I must have had four or five flounder and they grabbed hold of the bait and they got sharp teeth in there. And as soon as they got into within eight yards of the shoreline, they just spat the hook. <laughs> I'd just see them swim off. They were coming in along the top and then suddenly they, they were gone. So uh, we've got the ebb yet. The time is sit rep on time, sit rep 15.54. We've got another, what, half an hour, 40 minutes until the tide will start winkling out. I ain't fishing like a match fisherman, let's be honest, but I'm certainly having to reel in and change baits a lot more. That's what it's all about, isn't it? At the minute, no weed, good. Don't know what weed is like on braid. I don't know what that's like at all, but we shall find out. Well, come on, fish. Oh, if I, see, if I'd landed that fish, that would have been it. The pressure was off. The video was, uh, well, video ain't done. It's never done, because you always want to catch more fish. But do you know what I mean? That blank, that's the thing with me at the minute. The pressure with a keep catching fish is now building just like it was when I was constantly catching cod. So uh, I don't want a blank at all, but it happens, doesn't it? But you get these runs, don't you? And uh, some runs you don't like to have and you don't want to keep them going, um, if you know what I'm saying. But other runs, you want to keep going, don't you? But yeah, Mike, thanks for the ruler. Look, let me show you. I can measure me smooth hounds a bit better now as well. But when I catch a hound bigger than a metre, one metre, 10 centimetres, I'll have to stab something in at the end where the tail is. Whatever I do with the hounds this year, I'm not putting two marks in the sand and then jump up and down, dance and all over it. And then when I come back to measure it, there's no marks. Be nice to catch a fish on that Kenzaki, wouldn't it? Let's christen that rod. But to be fair, let's just catch a fish. That's what I want to do bring you back when I reel that in. Next rod to reel in, probably the far right one. Can you see that Ken Zaki rod, look. Can you see that? I think I've got a fish on it. It's just really gone for a bite. I don't know if to leave it a bit more. Oh, there's a bit of weed on the line. Let's reel it in and have another chuck out with it. There might be some on it, you never know. Could just be weed, couldn't it? Let's get you face down here.
that! <laughs> We're bloody caught, it's not a blank, that's out of a win. White rag, been out there two, three, four, five minutes. Might be six, but I've caught a fish on it already. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I don't believe it. I was nipping my ass a bit. One little flounder. What a baby flounder that is. Well welcomed. Let's just check us recording. I always say it, don't I? Yeah. Bloody great job. One flounder. Get that chuck back. Come on, let's come down in far. There you go. Gone. And the thing is, that's the blank beating. So that little codlin. Do you know what? I just had a phone call with John Spolton. And uh, I like having a phone call with John because he's always tying rigs. Whenever I phone him, he's tying rigs. He must have about 400 and he's tying another 30. So it's 430 he's got now. But um, he said, glass half, glass half full, Vern. Well, you know me, bloody glass is always empty. So, so yeah, I can't believe it. Just put the white rag on. What a bait that is. Where'd you get that from? And uh, bang, fish. And I get exactly what I was aiming for as well. So I'm gonna get them chucked out again. Them worms have been out five minutes. They'll catch me another. See you in a bit. That braid pinged off me finger then. It didn't go far, it went up in the air, but it's gone out 25 yards, probably 20 yards. It's plenty far enough. I reel that other rod in now, the far one. We'll get some fresh yellows on it. Getting there high now. Yeah, let's get this reeled in. <clears throat> and you might be able to see me from here, actually. Turn this light on. It's a bit dark. It ain't gonna make much difference, but there, let's pull this end rod in. Do a bait check. some fresh yellows on that. Doesn't seem to be nothing biting. What's going on? That looked like that had moved, but it hadn't. Has moved a bit. Right, I'll get this baited up and bring it back. Well, I'll tell you what. You can uh, aimlessly watch me change my bait if you like. But I'll be in and out of shot. So you might. Yeah, it'll be alright. It's quite a nice food, that.
fresh yellows, uh, bait and needle, the vrette. Got to use your worms in order because some of them are about to blow. They're still firm, good worm. You just put it on the bait and needle. I'm not here to teach you. I just put it on like that. Get another one. Yeah, so I've just threaded that on behind the camera. So you just literally thread it all the way up, that's what I do. the hook in when the old eyes see it and push it on and there you go let's get that casted out can't believe the weather it's absolutely lovely now it's going to get chilly as the sun go down, no doubt, but it's cracking weather right now then. I'm going to cast straight over this little rod here. I'll move these rods across, that can go there, that can come here. Oh. Swing it round, so I need to go straight out. cars for a red thump. I probably should have put it in shorter. Right, that cast has gone out further than the previous cast and what's it, what it's done is, you might not be able to pick it up, but it's crossed. It's crossed over already. So the tide, I would say, is probably started to go out. Um, I'll have to swap these rods over again. There. But it's not a blank. So what I was worrying about with the little codlin, that ain't happened. That ain't happened at all, has it? It's uh it's all good. <laughs> I'm happy now. I've got, I, I am really, really chuffed. It's just great to keep catching. I know it's going to come a day when you're blank, isn't there? But it's just great. I ain't caught many flounders in this river this year either. I ain't even had a dab yet. You couldn't see through that fish. I held it up to the sun. That was a flounder, baby flounder. I uh, can't believe I chucked it out with a white rag and it bit straight away. I mean, uh, I've never used white rag. I did ask him, I did say to Mike, I said, they don't bite, do they? Oh, I'm chuffed. I really am chuffed. There's lads fishing on the point. There's lads fishing right down there on the bank. There's a beach there, big long beach. Um, I would say the water's covered it all though. Right, let's, uh, one to, well, I ain't gonna go on about it. You know what I'm like. But if I'd have flicked that first reeling with a codlin on it, flicked it, um, I think the cod would have landed on the shore. It probably popped off the hook, but it'd have been on the shore and I'd have picked it up, wouldn't it? The main thing is I ain't blanked. That's the main thing, but I would like the, to catch at least a codlin. So uh, that run keeps going, because that'll be five then. And it adds to the total, doesn't it? I can't remember what I'm on now. I think the last video I was on 32, which isn't the last video that you watch, because the last video you watch is the one where I'm fishing with John. But um, oh, I can't remember what I'm on now. So that would have been 32. I did catch 32 in that one. Um, and then I had the little fish finger 33, 34, 35. Yeah, if I catch a codden today, it'll be 36 total, running total for the 
for the season since I started catching in in summertime. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Glass full, glass full, eh, John? That's what you got to think. Glass heart. No, is it glass? Oh, it's always empty for me. So this is hard remembering this saying. Glass half full, not half empty. Mine's always bloody empty. So yeah, you gotta think about it. It's still full, it's still full. I'm gonna get another. We've got the ebb to go. So perhaps the tide has turned. It is 20 past four. Um, fingers crossed. I'm gonna finish my chicken sandwich because I've just dumped it down. I hope that no mice have been on it. We'll find out if I've got wheels disease during the week. I'll do an update if I do get it because I won't be alive for long. See you in a bit. See if it comes back again. I just had a huge bite. I thought I had a bite earlier, but I was touching my bait bag. That's a bait bite, isn't it? That's on braid. It's quite. Boom. That's a bite in it. That's got to be on there. Let's get this reeled in. Bit of a fight that was. Well, I swallowed that, so I'm gonna have to de up that. So we'll get it unhooked, put it in the bucket. Right, we'll get this unhooked and then I'll uh, I'll give you a show. But yeah, brilliant. Can't believe it. I caught, caught another one, caught another one. So I'll bring it back when I've unhooked it. I'm getting used to this reel now. It is what it is. The thing is, I wanted a light reel because obviously it's lighter in your box then, isn't it? Well, outstanding, isn't it? Outstanding. So let's get you air. And uh, we'll uh, put that up a bit and we'll get the cloth and we'll rub that up there and uh, we'll get it in this hand. So, come on you little fella. Oh, you're all pretty. Yeah. Yeah, you're a wriggler, aren't you? That's good. Hey, all right, you ain't gonna wriggle down there, are you? Right, so. What flounder? Another one. On white rag, that's two flounders on the Kenzaki rod. So it's that christened, Jimmy. It'll certainly, whoa. It'll certainly catch some fish. But yeah, one flounder. Let's get that back. Let's take your wimmy, shall we? And what I'll do is, as the tide goes out, I'll make sure it ain't just sat there on the floor like a stupid fish. It won't, as the tide goes out, it'll follow the tide, so. But yeah, two flounders. Would have been a codlin and two flounders, but there you go. 
that would have been a fantastic fantastic session but not over yet time is oh what's the time hang on sit down for a minute i ain't got much wag, white rag left 16:43. so probably got another couple of hours so probably got time to catch a codlin i shall bring that middle rod in in a minute and uh bait up with yellow tails again send it back out absolutely fantastic chuff the bits first time i use white rag i've got one well, I've probably got about three quarters. I've probably got a whole worm left. So if I cut it up into inch bits, I've probably got two. I've got another two casts on a flapper rig, so it's another four baits. So that's good. You only need a small little bit on. It's unbelievable. I suppose them flounders. Um, it'd be nice if there's a dab out there, but yeah. Never good enough, is it? There's always something in there. I was then putting my coat on because I thought it's getting a little bit sun's gone in now you see so it's feeling a little bit fresh but it's not too bad it's not cold cold I mean I ain't even got my hand warmers um, I've got thermal bottoms on the thermal top but I haven't got my new thermals I've just got my thermal gear back from Reeds um, I'm not sponsored by anybody I buy all my own gear and uh, a matter of fact I have people I've had people ask me about lights and stuff and I ain't even I could have shouted it about and whatever and they would have given me 25 quid, 35 quids worth of I could have had a light what I wanted so it would be head torch or something but didn't do it probably should have done it but I didn't um, where am I going with this? yeah reeds because I keep going on about it but what I've done is I've bought a reeds coat and reeds salopettes they are expensive, they're like £160 each for each item um, but I bought those, I had the money I saved it up and kept it, some money aside and I bought it because you can get it repaired, you know about the repair I've already had to have it repaired because I've put, ripped the blood I mean what a thing to do, brand new coat and I rip it ooh, ooh, oh I'd love to have fish on the big rods that, that flounder on that rod felt huge Anyhow, yeah, so you can get it repaired. So that's why I bought it. But I bought the thermals and they are roasty. <laughs> they are lovely. But the bottoms didn't have a zip or a hole to get your old chap out so you could have a whittle. And uh, I sent them back because they said they can put a zip in it. So they put a zip in it and it goes across ways. So I'll just have it always unzipped so you can get the old chap out at an instant. Because as you get, oh, it's gone again. I don't believe it. It's going to be a Kenzaki um, session, isn't it? First boat on the Kenzaki. Anyhow, yeah, so I got the thermals back, but I didn't put them on today because the sun was out and I was hot in these thermals. So these are the thermals for this sort of weather where it's not cold and sun's out. And then I'll wear my reeds when it's bloody bitter. But yeah, just had a boat on the Kenzaki. Ain't gonna go again now, is it? Now I've put you on it. Yeah, that flounder had swallowed that hook down, but unhooked it through its gills. Perfectly all right. You saw how lively it was. It was jumping out of my hands, as they always do. Slippery little buggers, aren't they? Anyhow, I'll bring you back. If I get any more action on that, I shall uh, bring you back and show you. See you in a bit. See if we got any weed on it. It's heavy. line right in front of me
Nothing on it. Bloody hell. Let's get this uh, weed off, shall we? I've had a bite on this Kenzaki, but nothing else. They're probably still on there. Right, well we've got some weed on it, look. See that there? These baits aren't bloody touched really. Don't look like there's any big fish about. Uh, some people have come past and they've had one. But if they aren't here, they aren't here, are they? But the problem is, the problem is, let's get this on there. The problem is, is if they aren't there, then you ain't going to get them, are you? Um, they're probably across the other side of the river. Fish move about, but you know, when you drop them and lose them at the shore, you start to think that was my one chance. So, we've got to keep at it. Glass full, glass full, not half full. So I take the worms out as their mouth starts coming out. They're coming to the end. And these were the last worms Scott had. I was lucky to get them really. So, beggars can't be choosy. Ooh, that was the braid, that was the braid. Right, let's get this checked out up river. Clean my hands. Going out a long way, but it will be going up river. So it'll hopefully fight the pull. There is a bit of pull, it's whipping out quite quickly, really. Sun's gone, overcast now. Heat's gone, but over we go, up we go. Weed on the line, but that'll be all right. Got two choices, hasn't it? Swing round if I'm getting in the way of the braid. Um, hopefully. Right, that's a bait freshened up. I cast it out, it's out a long way. I've cast it upstream so it'll swing round and bed down. Um, I've had a tap on the Kenzaki again. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, and reel it in. Hopefully, we've got another dab on it. But there is two hooks. So if there's a 
dab flounder. If there's another flounder on it or a small codlin, that would be great. Uh, yeah. The Kenzaki rod is christened, Jimmy. We've caught two flounder on it and hopefully we'll get a little codlin. But we'll keep at it. We've got four more casts with the white rag and I'll see you in a bit. Just had a lift up on my rod, that middle rod. Oh, I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. It came up, went down, come up again. It's going up again, I might have to reel it in. What are we on? 24%. Let's hope we've got enough battery. Do I wait until I get a better, stronger bite? <coughs> Reel it in. Get press bait on. Could be weed, couldn't it? Water's still in, it's heavy, but it could just be weed and the weight on the mud. Got weed on the line. Oh, please be a cod. Please. It's heavy. That was nearly a slack liner, but it didn't go slack. I've got a fish on this. <sighs> yeah. Get it up the beach. <laughs> we got a cod. We got a cod. <laughs> Please don't run out, battery. Let's get it measured. Let's get it measured. We measured everyone. Bloody brilliant. Absolutely cracking. Oh, perseverance. In you go, baby. Let's get this up there. <laughs> Look what I got. Brilliant. Ain't you come, my fella. Oh, that's a nice fish. So nice fish. Good stamp. Good stamp. Oh, come on, you. There we go. They are 44. No, hang on. Yeah, 44 and a half. So we'll go 44. Absolutely brilliant, eh? 44 centimetres. There we go. There's the thumbnail. <laughs> Got another one. Oh, what's that? 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. 36, cod number 36. Absolutely brilliant. That makes up for the one that I lost. So it's two flounder and the codlin. Oh, go back in there while I get up. Because I'm an old man. Oh. Saw the, saw the rod. <clears throat> I saw the rod come up, then it went down, then it came up again. So I knew I had a fish on, but it could have been easily been a flounder, couldn't it?
Right, is that recording? Yep. So, here we go. One codling. Absolutely beautiful. 44 centimetres, let's get it back. The tide's gone down about a metre to now. Right, here we go. A little chuck out. That's it. Turn tail and go away. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, that's five on the trot, five times I've caught on the trot. Got a bit of weed on this, brave. So it's a little bit of weed, but not like normal. Normally it's, yeah, but less light on the star of the show. Hip's doing all right, it's doing its normal thing. Uh, what do you expect when you've got a shagged hip? Well, I better get it baited up and get it back out again, then. I'll we'll cast upstream, do the same as before. I'll bring you back. I'll get this baited up and uh, we'll get it casted out. So, absolutely fantastic. That's that out. Change this battery on this camera because that ain't gonna last. But new batteries certainly last longer than our old batteries. I'll tell you. Brilliant. Right, I'll get this battery changed. I'll have to reel that other rod in because that's swung right round. There could be a fish on it. Could be a fish on it. That was tapping, but right, see you in a bit. Right, we're gonna reel this in. Uh, I'm gonna put you there, um, and we'll walk down the beach. It is gone to the right, so there's either something on it. It was moving, dangerous, but there was no big bites, really pulling. Could be weed on it, couldn't it? Nothing on it. Weed. I'll take some painkillers, I think. Right, let's get this baited up and out. I don't, I haven't seen a bite on my Kenzaki. Uh, I did see it tap, so it could be a fish on it, you know. But
could put two worms on this bait needle. Yeah. And then uh, I'd do less walking, but you just don't think until you start walking. These worms are fantastic creatures. The way their gills come out and everything, and seem a shame to use them to be fair. But get such good results. Let's get this done. get this car today we'll go upstream again bring the camera around there these are the things you have to do limping around like an old cripple I'll put you there a bit further. Never mind, it's there. Where's caught a card? Yeah, should have gone upstream a bit more, but never mind. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, let's reel in this Kenzaki rod because it did bite. I did see a bite. Uh, you never know. Could have a flounder on it, couldn't it? Or a small codlin, that'd be nice. So that bite, there's still a worm on the bottom, still a worm on the top actually. Someone's had a go at it, both of them. Let's get some fresh on and uh, get some fresh on and then we'll uh, get that car. Cast it out, it's hooked round the tip now. Bloody brave. I think I'll get rid of it. Well, uh, sorry about this. It's all uh, sixes and sevens at the minute. Mind you, the weed comes off easier when you pull it off, off the braid. That might be a good idea. We'll see. All right, I've cut up some worms now. You can't see me, but that's what I'm doing. Well, uh, Chop these up.
cut an inch, about an inch, inch and a half. Um, that's all I was told to put on. I was told to put it on with a worm as well, but I'm just putting the white rag on because the other worms should do my other rod. I've only got a handful left. Should be able to use them all this time without having to That's gone quite a long way, that, to be fair. Um, oh dear. Yeah, we're recording. Nearly 11 minutes, Tom. I can feel that I've hooked in. Oh. Right, that's that out. Nothing on that. That line's crossed that line. Uh, we'll have to see what happened. I'll have to swap them rods over. We've got the Kenzaki rod out with uh, white rag on, fresh. So hopefully if something bites that, it'll hook itself this time. Um, and the other rod, let's pray for another cod. Or codlin, sorry. Uh, yeah, so dropped the codlin. I uh, don't know if I've mentioned it, but I was a bit miffed. And because uh, it's like a kiss of death, isn't it? But then I had two flounders on the Kenzaki rod, Jimmy. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? That that saved the blank. And and then I pulled in, I had a slack liner twice. I <laughs> made sure it was on. And uh, yeah, so we've had a coddling as well to 44 centimetres. Chuffed a bit. Yet again, another good session. Now, I might come fishing again in a few days time because like I said to you, in on Tuesday, it is spring. The official first day of spring, not the spring that the BBC weather use, where they like to make it uh, for wooky people. It is spring on the 21st of March, unless it's the 23rd and I got my dates wrong. But that's the time. Whatever time it is, I'm going fishing again after that, and I'll be then working all next weekend to make up for it. So I'll work two days at the weekend, so I'll get no weekend, but I'll have a break during midweek fishing. Which ain't much of a break because you've got to drag all your gear and everything and it's all hard work because the next day after fishing i'm i'm buggered you know not literally <laughs> let's just not talk about that sort of stuff but yeah i'm absolutely knackered so uh but these are the things you got to do to bring you a video <laughs> doing it for myself i just film it for you to watch and you enjoy it and that's a good thing now I've got to swap these rods around because they're tapping up and down now. It's either moving in the tide or because it is whipping out or it seems as though it's going past quick. Tide's gone down about in height, probably about 600 mil. So beach wise, about a metre and a half, two metre. So I'm going to swap these rods over and I'll bring you back when I get a ginormous bite right let's reel this in because it keeps tapping and i don't know about this braid but obviously if it taps a little you might have a fish on mutton you so let's reel it in and been out long Nothing on it. Nothing on it. So 
them baits out. Sort this out. What we'll do. A couple of lads just gone past on their motor scooters. Uh, used to do that years ago when I was a child. Used to do it on a crunch box, what was called a crunch box, which was a C90 or a C70. Uh, they did the C50 as well, Honda. Used to call it a crunch box because when you uh, put it in gear, it used to crunch. Um, and the one we had, um, we had to start it. Roger used to start it. Um, I fell in a load of nettles. Didn't put my feet down. And uh, just went in the nettles. And But it's even me or Roger. God, it was a long while ago. But Roger used to start this crunch box by spinning the magneto. Because the engine case wasn't on the magneto. So we didn't have a key for obvious reasons. And he used to, used to spin the magneto. And he used to start the bike up. that recording because I just heard it bleep yeah must have been my phone I do like this reel now. Um, I don't know what it'd be like with a big fish on, but with a braid, it makes a lot of noise with a braid for some reason. Well, there's the sun setting. Look at that over that bridge. It's right in the middle of the bridge. We'll keep an eye on that. Sun's coming down, but what a sight that is. Tom might be able to zoom in on that. He might not. <laughs> but I'll show it again in a bit. I'll keep getting up and having a look. I'm going to finish my coffee. There's a couple of fishermen coming. Uh, I'll see if they will have a chat. Or I'll look at them. You know if you're going to have a gin wag. But I think it's the chap that when I turned up here, he was here. He walked down there. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, what a cracking night. Lovely still water. Just how I like it. It's ripping through a bit. Um, 6.8 metre tide, but... What a glorious day it's been. Caught some fantastic fish. Chris and the Kenzaki. How about that, Jimmy? Chris and the Ken Kenzaki. The uptider. Two flounder. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, we'll see if we get another. I've got some more white rag, but if that don't go on that, I might stick it out on the big rod, put the Kenzaki away. I think it's earned, it's, it's, it's had its maiden voyage, that's all I'm gonna say. So I'll see you in a bit. I meant to say, there's three people going down there, two chaps and a lady, and uh, that's East Coast Shore fishing, or East Coast Shore, whatever it is. And uh, he's been fishing down in the bay opposite. Uh, not this not this bay here, but the next bay round. And uh, yeah, he come across and had a chat. It was nice meeting you. F I even forgot to ask your bloody name. How rude of me. <laughs> bloody useless, aren't I? Screw's coming out of my thing. I'll wind that in, that's not good. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, it was nice to meet you. Um, East Coast Shore, East Shore. 
Oh, I'll have to have a look. I'll have a look on my comments. Um, yeah, they've gone. I think I'm the last one here. So there's two chaps that were right down the other end. They've gone. They caught some. Uh, they caught some fish, some cod, and um, East Coast was in the two bays along with his wife and lad who uh, were champions in the LBC. They won their their designated bits or whatever it is. Uh, but there, they've had a nice day out. It's been a glorious day. Sun's been shining. I'm watching these rods for bites. I might put the Kenzaki away in a bit. I have got another load, but I might white rag, but I might put that on the big rod and see if what I get on that. Uh, sun has gone behind the clouds now on the sunset. So we didn't, that wouldn't have been lovely to get the sun going over the horizon between the bridges. And uh, that would have been great, wouldn't it? But that hasn't happened. So there, there's the wife. Shall we ignore her? Thumbs up if we ignore the wife. No, I'll answer her. What I'll do is, I'll see you in a bit. Slippery. Not good for my hip. We got another codling. Oh. We got another codling. Let's get it in the water. Bit of a shock to its system, isn't it? Oh, turn that down. We've got another codling. Let's get it unhooked. Oh, dear. Oh. Hip's starting to hurt. I took some painkillers. Right, where are you up to, my girl? Oh, there's a bit of blood there. Have a look at you. Uh, it's not looking good. Right, let's get this unhooked. See you in a bit. Well, we've unhooked it. We've unhooked it. I went through the gill, his left hand gill, with the old forceps, the old Billy method, which is what I've done on the, all my flounders and everything I unhook here and it gets deep. And it comes straight out. Absolutely fantastic. I never used to do that through round fish. I used to struggle. But. You can do it on round fish, you can do it on any fish. And as soon as you get confident with doing it on flat fish and stuff, you can get confident doing it on round fish, can't you? So chuff to bits, that saved that fish. If I hadn't gone and done Billy's unhooking method, um, yeah, it would have been a right mess. But the codlin's fine. Beautiful little codlin. It measures. Thirty-five centimeters. Thirty-five centimeters. So I'm sure you've got that. I don't know if you have, but yeah, that's uh, one beautiful codlin. Thirty-five centimeters or thirty-four, whatever it was. Thirty-five. Fantastic. So let's get that returned. <coughs> Yeah.
Yep, kicking around in that bucket, anyhow. What a booty, absolute booty. 35, 35, 35 centimeters, let's get that back. Two flounder, two codlin. Isn't that brilliant? It's worked out good. So I'll get this one baited up again. Get it chucked out, I think. I've got that white rag. And then I shall bring the Kenzaki in, put that away. Bring the other rod in, put that away. And then that'll be it. But yeah, so we've got a bit of time yet. The rocks are slippery down now. I don't like going over them. My hip's okay. It just aches. But it's not the excruciating pain that I normally get. So exercises and jollop is doing great for now so see you in a bit right we baited this up what we'll do is we'll get it chucked out let's get some lights on there you go i'll get some lights on the job ain't you we'll chuck this out to the right as usual right so we've got yellow tail and squid and white rag. Could have gone right down to the edge, but I couldn't be asked. It'll be all right. It'll find its way. this in and see what we've got on here. Tide is drifting out now, it's going away. So we need to see what we've got, haven't we? Hey, see what we've got. size two up so I suppose I could have put a size four on but yeah well what do I think of the Kenzaki rod uh, that's all tangled up look struggled with these that rig a bit one I ain't done one of the crimps up that's with a problem on yeah, yeah what do I think to the Kenzaki rod well at one point it was saving the blank that's why I've got a third rod sometimes. If the conditions are right, with this rod, I can use it in any conditions, really. Um, unless it's real hoosh surf, and then it'll just push the weight back on the shore. But yeah, it'll cast up to 10 ounce. Um, I've got to sort the line out on the reel. Uh, probably might put braid all the way through, 70 pound braid all the way through, or I'll just put some mono on. But yeah, I'll put this away. Thank you, Jimmy, this rod, the Kenzaki Uptide caught me two flounders and it looked it saved the blank because up until that point I'd lost the codlin. Um, but 
the big Vaselli rods have reeled in two codlin. Uh, one was 45 centimetres. Um, I've forgotten what measurements they were. Were they both 45? I don't know. You can tell me in the comments, can't you? Yeah. How exciting that is, eh? Yeah, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll watch this back anyhow because I'll say it and I'll know anyhow, but you can always uh, put, because I'll forget again, let's be honest. That's why I repeat. So I'll put this away, reel in. Which rod did I just cast out? I think it was the closest one to me. I'm a sod for that. I ought to have numbers on my rods. And uh, I'll reel them in and I'll bring you back as I reel them in. But I'll get this put away. It's done me proud. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Cheers. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. That's like some stupid idiot sort of thing, isn't it? it? See in a bit. Right, let's get this last one. This sec next rod reeled in. Don't think there's anything on it at all. Tide is drifting off. We've got plenty of time yet, but the problem is, is it's slippery. Here come the weed. Give it a shake. I don't know if my lines have a. I ain't even got my head torch out yet. Oh. That's that dead. Lost the rig. What a catastrophe. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Well, that's the line broken. I've never had that before with this line. No, never. Never mind. These things happen. I might be able to find my line down at the shore. I'll put my head torch on and have a look. Um, if I can handball it in, I will do. Don't I'll get, leave any snags, rarely. If I can help it. I'll see you in a minute. I just filmed all this, and I didn't even have put the camera on. I've just pulled my line in, and that snapped, and I've got a codling on it. 35 centimetres. See that? 35 centimetres. Absolute brilliant. That's free codling. So we'll get it in the bucket and what I'll do is what I'll do is I'll uh, run down there with the slippery shit chuck it back in pull the line up pull the line up and let it go free codlin so I've had two of a 40 and that one was 36 35 sorry so they're all different sizes I ain't lying to you because you can see it on the ruler. Let's get this back. Yeah, so the line, the line had got caught round some rocks um, and had, the rock had cut the line and uh, the fish was, fish was there. 
So well, I've got one more rod to bring in. I need to bring that in right now. Let's put this over here. So I've got my gear back. That's a good thing. Uh, we don't like to leave. Uh, don't like to leave stuff out there because it's lit. So let's get this. Let's get this. Uh, this real work done. <clears throat> let's get this last rod reel done. Free cod. What a shout! Caught another. Got to be the smallest codlin I've caught. Let's get it quickly measured. Fifteen centimeters. What an absolute little darling, eh? Little booty. Let's get that back. Oh. That filming? Yeah, look at that. 15 centimetres. I don't keep many out. No, there's but only uh, two of them might have made two pounds if I'm lucky, but I don't uh, I don't keep them anyway. I'm just pleased that if I gut hook them and stuff. Yeah. Then uh, Well I, I did be one, I had a rain job, but I got it and it swam so hopefully it was alright like but Yeah, I had one that was hooked bad, but a guy I knocked through its gill. Yeah, did you? Yeah, with the forceps like I do, and yeah. uh, it went back brilliant. Yeah, and then I got hooked up down there and it broke through my line, but my line got caught around the rocks because the fish was swimming. Yeah, yeah. And then I went down there, retrieved the rig, saw my fish there, so I got brought it up there, but that was only a 35. Yeah. But it's nice to catch them, isn't it? Yeah, to get a few and there. I've just had a little 15 centimetre. Have you really? Yeah, a little tiny booty it was. Yeah. So I've, it's gone back, swam off. So I've had four cod and two flounder. That's good enough, isn't it? That's brilliant, because yeah. uh, I weren't going to come because I'm busy at yeah. work. So uh, I'm pleased I have, because yeah, it's, it's yeah. on film, because I, I film it, you see. But yeah, yeah. 
It's uh, well, what a cracking show it's been, hasn't it? Uh, for Codlin, so yeah, they I know it was only small, but it was perfect in miniature and they're just nice to catch whether they're small or big. That's gonna grow up and hopefully not get eaten, and it'll grow into a big fish for next year. Uh, for Codlin, I forget the sizes, I've just, just been too exciting, been too exciting. So, four cod, codlin, and two flounder on the Kenzaki rod. So, it's been blinding. We lost the codlin at the beginning. I literally saw it on the hook and saw it come off and swim away. So, it could have been five, but it weren't to be. Uh, the two flounder came in and stopped the blank. I was so chuffed with that. Thank you, Mike, for the white rag. And it was great. Unbelievable. So, uh, what can I say? Two flounder, never measured them, did I? Two flounder, full codlin. So, uh, cracking session on the river umber. And the next time we'll be back here again. Um, I will soon be going on the beach, but it is spring. I have to catch a codlin in spring. I'll probably come here now and blank all the time. I'm two days away from away from uh, spring. It is the 19th today, it is Sunday. Time now is 18.54. So both rods are in, got one reel to put away, rods to put away, rigs to put away, pack up, long walk to the van. And uh, it's been enjoyable. It's been fantastic. It's been five sessions on the trot catching codlin. Let's hope there's a six. We ain't doing another huge run. I might be coming back here. It's look, it's easy. It's 45 to 50 minutes from my house. I am flat out at the minute doing two houses at the same time. So I've just got to grab a session when I can. And 45 minutes away, I can get here, get set up, get ready, start fishing, and hopefully catch fish for you. Um, have a yap to you, and we'll uh, make a video. So uh, yeah, it is going to be hard the next few weeks. I might get a session on the beach, um, hopefully I will, but the next session is definitely here because I need a codlin in springtime and it'll either be this week or later on this week or it'll be sometime this week, let's hope it isn't next week, but we'll see how the houses go because you know what I'm like, I start working and I have to finish, So, but I, I can't do that, I've got to take time out to go fishing, so thanks for watching been an uh, absolutely enjoyable session um, I've still got some low lug some yellow tails left so it does look like I might go Wednesday if I go if I come here Wednesday which is spring then I will have to work the weekend but I don't mind that don't matter once the work's done then I've got lots of free time and yeah it's been enjoyable can't get over it rarely four codlin two flounder six fish all together and it's been brilliant so Next time I see you, it will be here for a spring codlin. So I've caught one in summer, autumn, winter, and spring. Fingers crossed, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in off.
Wow, oh, you bugger. This is why you need the towel. They don't slip out from the towel. Right, is that recording?